In this video, we're going to talk about histograms and frequency tables. We're going to talk about how to create and interpret frequency tables and histograms, how we can look at the data and see what shape it is and what that tells us, and then how to create and interpret cumulative frequency tables. Before we talk about frequency tables, we should probably talk about what frequencies and intervals are. So let's take a look at the intervals here and the values between them as I fill in these values over here. One, three, four, seven, ten, and thirteen. Now let's take a look at the values in the interval twenty through forty. Well, we have twenty-nine here, we have thirty-seven, and we have thirty-one, so those would be our values in that interval. Twenty-nine, thirty-one, and thirty-seven. The interval is all of the values, but the frequency is the number of data values in an interval. So for example, in this particular interval of 0 to 20, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values. So the number of data values, the frequency of the interval 0 to 20 is 6. And the frequency of the interval 21 through 40 is 1, 2, 3. We have three values there. So that's our frequency. Now a frequency table is when we take the number of values and we organize them by their interval. So let's see what that looks like. Create a frequency table for this problem. The numbers of home runs by the batters in a local home run derby are listed below. What is a frequency table that represents the data? So the first thing that we want to do is define our intervals. We want to find out how many intervals we need. To do that we need to find what the min and the max values are. In our case the minimum value here is 2 and it appears that the maximum value is going to be 17. So all of our values are going to fall between 2 and 17. And there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 total values. Now, in a frequency table, all of your intervals have to be the same size, and we need intervals for the data from 2 to 17. Now, we want to break it up into four pieces. I'm going to go ahead and break that up into intervals that fit 20. You'll notice that each one of our intervals has five values. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So all of them have five values. And then once we've defined our intervals, we're going to count our values. So how many values do we have that fit into each interval? Let's count those up. We have our tally marks for all of our frequencies. Let's go ahead and write in our values. So we'll actually have 3 here, 5 here, 4, and 2. And that's the frequency of each one of those intervals. And that is our frequency table. Once we've completed our frequency table, we can go ahead and create our histogram. Histograms are basically bar charts, but all of their intervals have to be the same. So each one of the bars has to be the same width, right? So we're going to go ahead and make those. Let's go ahead and use a color blue for this. We know that our first interval, 0 to 4, has a frequency of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this up here. All right, and then I know that my next interval, 5 to 9, has to have a value of 5. And there we have our intervals spaced out using a histogram. And that's all you have to do. So in order, we are going to define our intervals, count our values, and then finally create our histogram. Let's also talk about the shape of data. The shape of data tells us interesting things about the median and the mode, and we can kind of understand those things when we look at it. I want to stick really basic with this lesson. We're going to talk about three different shapes of data. Number one, if the bars are roughly even across there, then that is considered a uniform distribution in your histogram. It's uniform because it's roughly all the same data. If your values make basically a symmetrical shape, where if I was to draw a line right down the middle and it creates basically the same shape on both sides, those are called symmetric. So we have uniform, we have symmetric, and then finally we have skewed data. Skewed data is up one side and really quickly down the other. That's skewed. Now, there's a difference between skewed left and skewed right. And the difference is which tail is the longest. So, for example, if I look at this example, I can see that my data goes up for a long time and then drops off to the right. But this tail, the longest part of the tail, is on the left. So this is skewed to the left. On this side, 
my tail extends out to the right. So this is skewed to the right. The data extends longer on the right hand side and creates this little tail so it is skewed to the right. So you should be able to quickly recognize which shape this is. Is it uniform, symmetric, or skewed? Well, in this case, they're not all even, so this is going to have to be symmetric because I can draw a line roughly down the middle and get essentially the same shape on both sides. If I were to fold them in half, they would be the same shape. Now, over here, my interval has a tail on it. It's going to be skewing up like this and then dropping off. That is skewed. It is skewed here, but is it skewed to the left or to the right? And the tail is longest on the left, so it's skewed to the left. We've been talking about things that you probably talked about in sixth grade, histograms and frequency tables, we're going a little bit deeper and talking about the shape of the data, but it's all been pretty familiar. This time we're going to build on that and talk about what's called a cumulative frequency table. It's cumulative because you're looking at the cumulative values in your frequency. Okay, so let's take a look at our data from last time. We have our data from our last time where we had our runs and our frequency. These are all the same. The cumulative frequency is simply a way of counting it up as we go. So we define our intervals just like we did before, we count our values just like we did before, and then we accumulate them. So here's what the cumulative frequency looks like. We have three in the first spot, and then we accumulate the next five, which gives us eight here, and then we have 12 here because we add four to it, and then finally 14 here. So we add each time to get the value in the cumulative frequency. So it's really not that difficult. And I think you should be prepared for all our homework.